A very good evening. You're watching Prime Time News live and direct from the News First Center here in Colombo. For the News First team, I'm Rahna Farooq. Let's start off with a look at your headlines for tonight. Suspects arrested with 100 kilograms of explosives, detained and interrogated. Sri Lankan Airlines says cancellation of A350 aircrafts and procurement of unproductive aircrafts was ill-suited to the business structures. Mahindra Rajapaksa assumes duties at the office of the opposition leader. Dayasiri Jayasekara says speaker responsible to reveal names of those implicated by the Bond Commission. The International Rice Research Institute and Government of Sri Lanka today inked a comprehensive work plan to advance Sri Lanka's rice self-sufficiency goals through joint research for development projects in the country in the next five years. The Sri Lankan delegation headed by President Maitri Pala Sirisena who toured the International Rice Research Institute or IRRI today were welcomed by a group of Sri Lankan students in the Philippines. The Deputy Director General of the IRRI and the additional Secretary to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs signed the agreement for the comprehensive work plan between the two parties. The Sri Lanka International Rice Institute five-year work plan will complement and help implement the new Sri Lanka national plan for the rice sector. The President also inspected seed varieties endemic to Sri Lanka and observed the sowing of these seeds through the camera of a drone. The IRRI named a section of the research facility after President Maitri Pala Sirisena in appreciation of his dedication to agriculture. Meanwhile, the President met a group of Sri Lankans residing in the Philippines yesterday. Certain facts were presented on issues faced when obtaining visas for those living in Sri Lanka and the Philippines. I take this opportunity to state that I will use this new degree of friendship between the Sri Lankan government and the Philippines that was formed through this visit to solve these issues that you face. This is our responsibility and our duty. No matter where Sri Lankans are residing in the world, we are happy for them. And as a government, we must listen to the issues that they face and we must provide solutions to these issues. This is one of the main duties of a government. I will discuss with the government of the Philippines to take a new approach on these matters and resolve these issues. The four men who were arrested with 100 kilograms of explosives in Wanathawillua Putlam are being interrogated under detention orders. The Criminal Investigation Department carried out a search operation with the assistance of the Police Special Task Force after it was tipped off that a person with suspected involvement in causing damage to the Buddha statue in Mavanala recently was hiding in the coconut estate in Vanatha Villua. Police said four men aged between 20 and 25 were arrested at the site where the raid took place. Upon further searching the property, three barrels containing approximately 100 kilograms of explosives and six barrels containing nitric acid were discovered. In addition, 99 detonators, an air rifle, a 12-bore shotgun and seven bullets, seven bullet casings, two tents, a digital camera, a laptop, several books printed in Tamil and Arabic, a visa document and several other materials were recovered from the property. Police said among the arrested is the son of the property owner. Today, the CID led the investigation on recovered explosives. Police said as per the instructions of the Ministry of Defence, the suspects are being interrogated under a 90-day detention order. The infestation of the fall army worm or the Sena caterpillar has caused severe problems in the agriculture sector in the country. This infestation has destroyed thousands of acres of corn cultivated in the country and it poses a serious threat to many more crops. This is the Siyamalandua village in the Kotiagala area of the Mondagala district. This shop was once one of the busiest in this village. However, that is not the case anymore. I have no money to even bring goods to the shop. All the products have been sold to villagers on credit. I do not even earn 500 rupees a day. We have run out of flour, 
rice flour and kerosene oil. We do not even have money to purchase them. Farmers are finding it hard to afford even one meal a day. I have debt of nearly 3 million rupees. There are many more shop owners like me in this village. We are confused and don't know what to do. This is a terrible issue. I have mortgaged my land and obtained bank loans of around 1.5 million rupees. These loans have been used for farming. All of this have been destroyed. I have no way of taking back the items that were given from the shop. There is no way of repaying our loans. We plead that loans obtained by farmers must be written off or some form of relief should be provided to us. It is difficult for us to live. During a tour in the Kajuvatta village of the Mahaveli C division in Dimulagala today, our Gammada teams noticed that the Sena caterpillar has begun to spread in the Polonnaru district as well. The devastation caused by this caterpillar has affected nearly 1,200 acres of corn cultivation, thus adversely affecting 475 farming families belonging to this area. We are helpless. How can we raise ourselves from this situation? We are facing difficulties in selling produce and no one is willing to purchase them due to the prevailing situation. This is mainly due to the excess usage of chemicals. We are compelled to consider all of this produce as waste and obsolete. We cannot earn any income from these. The situation in the Namal Oya farming colony in Ambara is not second to the rest of the affected areas. We fear that this epidemic will spread to the paddy cultivation. The corn cultivation is already devastated. There are two or three caterpillars in one bean. We have used all kinds of insecticides. We received an insecticide worth 3,500 rupees from the government for free. They asked us to use ash and we followed their instructions. Then they asked us to use another type of insecticide. We followed all of these instructions, but there was no result. These farmers disregard our instructions. We have requested them to use insecticide as a concentration, but they dilute the insecticide in water. Diluting the insecticide in water is a huge mistake. We continuously spray insecticides, but after a few days, these caterpillars raise their heads again. We are helpless. Many farmers fear that this epidemic will affect other crops. It is important to note that there is no point in spraying insecticides to paddy and other plants, especially vegetables that have not been attacked by the caterpillar. Therefore, you must be wise and be patient and use the correct mechanism to solve this issue. <laughs>200 aircraft as per an agreement reached thereafter do not go in line with the company's present business plan. <laughs> Clearly on the 3rd of October 2016, that is the day before the agreement was cancelled on the 4th of October, the chairman of the airlines at the time, Ajit Dias, had sent emails to an email address ravikaru at and kabir ah at gmail.com and two other email addresses. The emails had informed them that the Prime Minister at the time, Ronald Wickremesinghe, had taken a decision to cancel this agreement. It is quite clear that the Prime Minister had intervened in the cancellation of this agreement and through his friend Ajit Dias had done so without any official approval. According to Sri Lankan Airlines, the previous management had leased the A330 aircraft to another airline. Sadly, that airline had defaulted in its payments. It adds the present administration is taking necessary steps to recover the losses from the respective company to which the aircraft was leased to. Sri Lankan adds that the possibilities of leasing the aircrafts to a transit airline 
or another airliner are being considered. If the media that exposes such massive fraud and corruption that destroys the money of hard-working Sri Lankans are branded as black media, shouldn't the perpetrators of these crimes be branded rogue elephants? The Petroleum Corporation Employees Union revealed that the China Bay oil tanks have fallen into the grasp of thieves. A section of two of the oil tanks owned by Lanka IOC has been removed and stolen. The pipe supplying oil to the tanks as well as the number of fixtures at the facility has been robbed. Ten suspects were arrested by the China Bay Police on the 12th of this month. May tanky sankin. The loss as a result of the Petroleum Corporation not using these oil tanks amounted to 2,000 million rupees. We only have storage facilities to maintain a surplus for two weeks. The country is currently in quite a dangerous situation. Therefore, this is a time the country needs to use these oil tanks the most. The upper section of the tanks were used by the IOC from 2003. Not only did they not use this section, they cut off the pipe system here and sold it off for scrap metal. There were large brass pipes here. Those were shipped off to India. We lodged a complaint against this and no action has been taken as yet. The trade union alleges that this oil storage facility is being destroyed due to the lapse in the agreement between Sri Lanka and an Indian corporation. Along with the IOC, there is no proper security provided. This place was vandalized by thieves. Police arrested many suspects on a number of such incidences, but due to the lack of involvement from the IOC, they have not been punished. We wrote to the minister in charge about this. The IOC has proved that they cannot protect this national asset of ours. Therefore, this cannot be allowed to be destroyed like this. The Petroleum Corporation must take this over immediately. Until then, the Petroleum Corporation must be in charge of providing security to this facility. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe spoke about the Matala Airport yesterday. Prime Minister Vikramasinghe was speaking at the opening ceremony of the medical faculty of the Sabara Gamo University. There is an airport in Matala. We are in talks with the Indian authorities to reduce the loss at the airport. There is a massive loss at the Hambantara port. We are doing a lot of work with the China Harbour Company to reduce this loss. If one cannot provide proper leadership to take the country forward, is it not wise to simply pack up and leave without selling off national resources? During a press briefing today, the SLFP questioned about an alleged agreement that is to be signed between Sri Lanka and the USA. This matter has been discussed on the 28th of August last year. This document includes information regarding an agreement Sri Lanka is planning to form with the USA. As per the agreement, American soldiers and army equipment will be brought into our country. As per the agreement, the impunity enjoyed by members of the US Embassy delegation will also be enjoyed by them. India was displeased with us following the sale of the Hambantota port to China. The United States also raised several issues regarding this transaction. And now to please them, preparations are underway to give away the East Container Terminal of the Colombo port. Similarly, if a naval base is to be established in Trincomalee, what will be the fate of our country's sovereignty and territorial integrity? When the vote in Parliament was in favour of the ruling party, there were few ambassadors who even applauded. My question is, did they extend their support to achieve all of this? <laughs> The president is not responsible in revealing these names. I have made this statement previously. There is no such document to be presented in parliament or revealed to the public. It was the speaker who stated in parliament that due to certain factors these names cannot be revealed. Therefore this must be inquired from the speaker. Gotabe Rajapaksa says that he is prepared if the people are prepared for a presidential election. Even I am prepared for a presidential election as I am prepared to work with the president. He did not say that he is ready to be the presidential candidate. There is no reason to be worried over candidates for the presidential election. Even the UNP has so far failed to find one. Even we have issues in deciding who will contest. As the SLFP, our stance is that the president should be the presidential candidate. 
The politicians of the North and the South spoke about the statement made by TNA parliamentarian M. A. Sumandaran recently. Sumantiran has a weakness. When he takes the microphone to his hand, he speaks anything and everything. That has to be controlled. If a mistake is committed, the media will point it out. Sumantiran has mentioned that the LTTE has murdered many people. When the Prime Minister spoke in Parliament, he mentioned the black media. He said that it will be revealed in Parliament. When he was speaking, he mentioned certain media institutions by name and did not mention the names of several others and said that these institutions are against the solution. The people who brought back Ranul Vikramasinghe, her, stating that democracy should be protected, are making these statements while attempting to control the media. Will the ITAC accept this statement made against the media? Will Mave Sena Dirwaja accept this statement? Is this the stance of Sumantiran as an individual or the opinion of the ITAC? During an event held in the Northern Province, media spokesperson of the Tamil National Alliance, Sumantiran, had accused the media. On the 8th of January 2015, the government was changed. Independent networks such as Sirasa and Shakti were involved in this. This media organization is with the people even during the event of a natural calamity. It has become a habit to call these media networks black media or a black sheep. Expressing such ideas is against the freedom of media. We cannot accept this. During the past few days, Sumantiran had been criticizing the media, saying that Sirasa, Shakti and News First and similar media organizations are working against him and the leader of the TNAR Sambandhan. He called them black media. He said that he will expose them. Not only that, he threatened them. Sumantiran's expectations that the media should report only what he says on the constitution and that the president's, prime minister's and minister's statements on the constitution are false is a depiction of dictatorship. Instead of fulfilling the promises given to the Tamil people, this is how he attacks the media networks that are reporting the truth to the Tamil people. Sumantiran says that the media are carrying false reports regarding him. But the media had showed what he said. At one point, he had said that we can get a Tamil Elam and that there are laws for that and that we have the right to do that. He is trying to show the Sinhala people that he is a good boy. He is making these kind of statements to show the Tamil people on this side that he is a good person. When he makes a statement like this, the people in the South get to know his true form and that is why he is criticizing the media now. There is a situation where Sumandiran cannot go to the people without STF protection. Tomorrow, even if the STF is present, Sumandiran cannot go to the people. He is lying that much. We will reveal all of these lies. Statements are being made that there is no draft of the constitution in parliament. Some are saying it is a draft. Some are saying it is a proposal. So at a time when this has been presented, Sumantiran is presenting separatist ideas they want systematically. A majority of these were not drafted by experts. People say they were written under the guidance of Sumantiran. We love this country. We are not racists. We have to ask the UNP as to if the country is being steered by the cabinet of 30 ministers appointed legally under the 19th Amendment to the Constitution or is it the group of MPs led by Sumandiran that is functioning above and beyond even the President and the Prime Minister that is making decisions on behalf of the country? Today, Sumandiran has clearly stepped on the UNP. MP Sumandiran makes a statement saying that they can bring down this government in one day. To date, has this government been able to reveal the people who covered their faces and protested opposite media institutions in this country? Were they even able to call a report on the matter? the black media that Ranil Vikramasinghe saw and the black media that was subsequently seen by Andhra Kumara Desanayake of the JVP. I noticed that MP Sumantiran had yesterday seen this black media too. He sees media as a threat. He named certain media organizations saying that they publish false reports. But we must say that the people of this country have their eyes open. They have an ability to understand. The people of this country can hear and see the things done by this government. Thus, the needs of the country and the needs of the government are travelling in two separate directions now. Considering all of this, the question that begs to be answered, is Sumantiran a representative of the Tamil people or a puppet of Ranil Vikramasinghe? 
This is how MP Sumantiran recently in Parliament conducted himself in front of Lakshman Kiriyalla, a senior member of the United National Party and the leader of the House. <laughs> According to Article 31 of the Code of Ethics approved in Parliament, quote, no member shall assault, harass or intimidate any person, unquote. Article 32 further adds, quote, every member shall act in a manner that is respectful of his fellow members and the parliamentary staff and the people of the country with dignity, curtsy and without diminishing the dignity of parliament, unquote. Speaker of Parliament, this is over to you. A banner put up for the opening ceremony of a road in Point Pedro was vandalized by an unidentified group. The road was declared open on the 16th of this month by parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran. A group of UNP MPs made a presentation on the new constitutional proposals to the Mahanayakas of the Asgiri and Malwatta chapters. The members of parliament who visited the Asgiri Vihare in Kandy visited the Mahanayaka of the Asgiri chapter, most venerable Varakagoda Sri Nyan Ratnathera, and informed him about the new constitutional process and proposals. Most venerable Thibatwave Sri Sumangalathera, the Mahanayaka of the Malvatu chapter, was given a brief on the new constitutional proposals at the Malvatta Mahavihare today. <laughs> Minister Ranjit Madhum Bandara and Palita Rangi Bandara both called on Venerable Madhagama Dhammananda Thera, the registrar of the Askiri chapter of the Siam sect. Opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksha officially assumed his duties today at the opposition leader's office. Mahinda Rajapaksha began his official duties following religious observances. <laughs> As the opposition leader of the entire country, the office of the opposition leader will be open for the entire country after four years. 
Until now, this place was only limited for the issues of certain areas. Today you know that democracy is slowly fading away. People of this country are facing many economic hardships. When speaking about issues in the agriculture industry, the government has not paid adequate attention to this. On the issue of the Sena caterpillar, I think this situation has escalated to become quite a serious one. It doesn't seem like this government will provide a permanent solution to any of these issues. Therefore, we will collect all forces against the government and take action against them. <laughs> The promotional activities of Sports First Platinum Awards commenced for a third day today. The Platinum Awards is held with the objective of recognizing, commending and awarding the talents of the sportsmen and women of the country. The promotional activities for the day commenced at the Chilau Ananda National School. Zonal Educational Director of Chilau, Sadda Mangala Subhasingha, Deputy Zonal Director of Putlam, Isuruja Sundara, Principal of the Ananda National School in Chilau, Dhananjay Vikrama, also attended the event along with officials of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited. 20 sportsmen and women will be awarded and 10 medals will be provided at the Platinum Awards 2018, which will be held on the 29th of March. Alliance is the sponsor of Platinum Awards 2018. In line with the campaign, sports workshops will be conducted at 30 selected schools across the country and the most talented sportsmen and women from these schools will be presented with Platinum Awards. And that's the... And that's the wrap for primetime news. For the News First team, I'm Rahna Farooq. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant night.